Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. You're adjusting before you call. You're anticipating it. You... Of course I'm anticipating it. I could probably spend years fixing this boat, stem to stern. Oh, you mean Sam? He's just the sweetest, ain't he? A real charmer, my dad'd say. Nah, but I've been thinking on one. Gotta get to know him better, I think. Maybe ask him what he prefers. It ain't nice to give folks a nickname without him giving you the okay first, you know? Of course, that don't stop Felix. Hey, Cap. I understand we have decided to continue supporting the outlaw scientist, Dr. Phineas Wells. Byzantium, Captain. Do you mind? I'm meeting someone. Shh. No names, okay? The Phoenix is a wanted man and the board has eyes everywhere in Byzantium. Yeah. You're looking to make contact with Minister... Uh, Magpie, right? I should warn you, it won't be easy. He spends most of his time in this estate, which is heavily guarded. Afraid not. He almost never leaves his home, and his guards never leave him. Whoa, I'm not one of your B&E specialists. I just provide intelligence. Some of the guards hang around Billingsley's House of Inebriation between shifts. That place is still open? I used to study there during medical school. Maybe you could do some reconnaissance there. You know, swipe a key while nobody's looking. Just remember, you didn't hear it from me. in Byzantium, there's something I've been meaning to do. I haven't actually talked to my folks in a while. Shocking, right? Anyway, it's probably about time I paid them a visit. Given the dangerous life I lead, they've got to be worried sick. Whoa, let's calm down. I'm not asking for a favor or anything. I'm only bringing it up because we're already here. See, I'm originally from Byzantium, born and raised. I know that probably comes as a big surprise. Yeah, exactly. 
Oh, well, I was thinking you'd come too. Because it would be fun. Of course not. I mean, not unless you want to bring a feral canid or a mantis or a leash. That'd make a real impression. Great. And when we get there, draw out your rough edges a bit. If you've got an outfit you haven't washed in a while, maybe one with some blood stains, wear that one. Oh, and help yourself to the good snacks and put your feet on the coffee table. Mother hates that. That's the idea. Anything else? Hey, you. Antibiotic. Yeah, you. Antibiotic. Wanna be famous? According to local legend, if you walk around the orrery three times, your corporate rival will die of a paper cut. Just imagine busting up all these windows, looting all these stores. I've always loved. You with the hips. Over. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Don't speak. Hold that posture for a moment while I admire you. You have a natural contraposto, my dear. The way you rest your weight against your hip suggests a certain rugged charisma possessed only by the mighty primal and the well-traveled spacer. Splendid. I love it. You're not afraid of speaking your mind, you smolder and growl. Oh, you're just too perfect. I'm Celeste Jolicoeur, and you, my dear, are exactly what Byzantium needs. I'm an artist, darling, not a tweed merchant. I don't sell things. I pollinate the world with art. I'm working on a new line of clothing that will shock this city to its core, and I'd like your help. What do you say, my dear? Care to make history with me? Consider it a standing offer. Well, for the good law's sake, darling, how can you expect me to dress her properly? Fetch her here so I can take her measurements and judge her aesthetic. What can I do for you, darling? Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. Uh, I am no such thing, ma'am. Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back-of-the-envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright. There. Darling, do I look like an amateur? I read her measurements by eye. And don't you ask, because they're no one's business but her own. Now stand back. Back, back! I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? 
Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. Oh, can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Well, I guess that's everything then. After all this time, I can... I just have to actually do it now. You know, there's there's a part Jun Lei's been looking for to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. Yeah, that sounded pretty desperate, huh? Next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, this is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you've done. Remember that stranger I saw? Citizens, today marks a monumental occasion in the course of Halcyon history. The heck me, or could each of these homes fit all of our Edgewater inside? Cannery and all. There's my parents' place. Smell that? Industrial grade cleaning solvent and Marilyn, is that you? Laws, we certainly didn't expect to see you like this. And I didn't expect you to renew your marriage contract. But we're all full of surprises today, aren't we? Speaking of surprises, you should meet my new friend. We've been running around the system for a while now, stirring up all sorts of trouble. I don't know what to say. He's usually not like this. Come on, you're supposed to help me make an impression. Anyway, you're probably wondering where I've been all this time. Not <clears throat> exactly. The last few years have been a bloody haze. You wouldn't believe the messes we've gotten ourselves into. Right? Yep, we're a pair of disgraceful lowlifes. Marilyn, this really isn't the best time. Uh, perhaps you should go. We'll stay as long as we like. And while we're at it, we'll drink your expensive hooch, wear our outside shoes all over your nice floors. He's right. Since when can you afford authentic Terran marble? That's what we've been trying to tell you, dear, but you must understand, we hadn't heard from you in ages. We thought you were dead. I'm not dead. I just never wanted to talk to you again. I'm afraid the distinction was lost on us, darling. We only did what any grieving parents in our position would do. We collected on your life insurance policy. And the payouts have been rather uh, substantial. You what? Well, now that I'm here, I guess you'll just have to report back that I'm very much alive and kicking. It's not that simple. For one thing, we'd have to cut back on so many necessities. 
The neighbors would be sure to notice. Damn right, Captain. Fine. I'm gone. Forever this time. Let's talk outside. I've done plenty of smuggling runs, but this thing with the chemicals is bold. Can you believe those two? We'd hardly been there a minute and they turned us out like yesterday's garbage. I wanted them to get upset. I just thought it would play out differently. They'd both be sitting there watching one of their vapid aether wave dramas and then we'd walk in. Mother would drop her mock apple cider and the glass would shatter all over their overpriced marble. Father would tear off his glasses and blink open-mouthed. I know. I just didn't want to get booted out of the house I grew up in like that. It's embarrassing, you know. And I've got a reputation to maintain. I hope you don't think I'm talking about this because I want to be introspective. But I want to talk about me now. Unless you mean the kind who'll look out for you to blink so they could swipe your bits. The galaxy's not exactly crawling with those. Anyway, I don't want to sift through this lousy experience for meaningful life lessons. I'm mad, and I want to do something about it. Something like... Wait a second. What if I could get that money? Want to bet? I've got some big appetites, and they're all cheap. Let's look at this as an advance, on my dying eventually. Besides, if anyone deserves to profit off my death, it's me. I could open a new account, designate that account holder as a sole beneficiary. All the payouts would go to me. I'll make money without doing a thing. And I'll get to cut them off. You know me, Captain. I don't like to leave a debt unpaid. My policy is with the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group. They have an office in Byzantium. Maybe you could use some of your people skills to help me set up a dummy beneficiary account. If that doesn't work, I'm sure we can find one of their terminals and do it ourselves. Miss Ellie, er, uh, Dr. Van Hill. I noticed your pistols been making a funny noise. What are you talking about? I oil it every night. Well, look here. You're recoiling fully? You might be due for a new spring. I could take a look, maybe fix it for you. Uh, sure. I'm short on bits at the moment, but I'll pay you a bit. You take real good care of your pistol, Dr. Fenhill. I oughta. It's kept me alive this long. I mean, you treat it nice. Makes me happy to see, because I feel the same way about my wrench. Look, it's a tool that does a job. Feelings got nothing to do with it. I've always loved that scar.
I guess we're going to Fallbrook. I think the Privy's gold-plated, too. 